Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Flight Images, and um, this is just a quick update to show some aspects of my experimenting with this, and this is the 10 times Lauer Aragon uh, micro lens. Um, I've showed the other day, I've got a suitcase here full of different lens attachments here that allow imaging up to 50 times magnification. Now, I do macro work typically 0.3 to 3x magnification for my commercial work and I photograph electronic components all sorts of bits and pieces uh, however there is a big step up when you go from say 2 3 magnification up to 10 magnification in this case and the maximum I can get on this which is 50 magnification now vibration is a big problem um, I've built this board here uh, what it is it is 18 mil uh, MDF and I've got two lengths of it and this section here is hinged along the bottom there it's hinged with just an ordinary piano hinge because piano hinges uh, if you've attach them well and you're, you're careful about marking things out they have very little slop in them just because of the pure size of them you've got very little movement in it that you don't want apart from the hinge movement so this section here can be lifted up and it's I haven't worked out the precise way of setting this yet for the angle so at the moment it has got a there's a pen wedged in there. That's also what that's used. But anyway, that allows me to set the angle. Now I've marked out a centre line on this and I've used some of the Rogetti kit that I tested over the years for making a movable table at that end. There's all sorts of ways you could go about that size of it. But what I really wanted to do is to see whether this is capable of working. It's a GFX 100 here. Um, we're looking at 100 megapixel. 100 megapixel micro photos, micro photograph, 100 megapixel micro photography. Here is a shot I took of an electronic component. Now the components, I've got bags and over the years I've done quite a lot of these and I've got bags of different sizes. Uh, this one, even with these glasses, I can barely see the chip that is shown in here. Uh, the chip itself I think is about a half a millimeter square. The reason I picked this one is because on one side of it, it has the solder bumps where it's attached to the wood. You can see there's a coating, you can see the actual chip inside. Now to take this shot here uh, I've used uh, Helicon Focus. This is a stack shot rail, micro uh, focus rail. I've used um, Helicon Capture without a camera attached. Now, older versions of Helicon Capture, you could use just the stack shot. It would ignore the fact there's no camera. So I don't need a dummy camera here because I'm using a slightly older version of the software. Um, that apparently is, is an omission in the current version and will be fixed. But anyway, this is a stacked image. The images were taken as raw files on this. This was connected with a USB-C lead to the Mac Studio. I'm running uh, Fujifilm Exacquire on this, which means that photographs from this will be dumped to a folder on, on here. There's nothing fancy, there's no live view, there's no fancy functions and that, but it means I don't have to use C1 or any other software to get the images off here onto here. I've set this to JPEG only mode, to purely for size purposes, and also, um, you know, processing that many raw files, is, it just fills up disk space for no good reason. And, uh, um, the shutter release on this, the shutter release cable is connected to the stack shot controller. So I'm using Helicon Capture to control the motor here, to step this backwards and forwards. And I'm using this to fire the shutter. And then I'm using Exacquire to get the uh, JPEG file off here onto here and then I'm doing the focus the focus stacking in Helicon Focus. Now I put a link I've got a big three-part written review of Helicon Focus of what I use about stacking and various things but that's all at macro and sort of close-up work it is not for this. Um, incidentally I've just heard I should be getting the Fujifilm 110mm tilt shift lens which also has near macro facilities on it so I'll, I'll be trying that on this rig as well. Um, it needs to be solid. 
um, vibrations is. I'm sure when I get to 50 times, it'll be a matter of only doing it when there's nobody in the house. It helps that this is a very heavy chest of drawers here, map drawers, and it's full of stuff, which means it doesn't move much. By using dense wood like this, it deadens it as well. I love that. But anyway, here's an example. There was about just shy of, I think about 180 shots stacked to make this image. The pattern you can see um, behind the chip, uh, actually the, this is somebody's uh, business card I picked up at a show. And uh, in all, things, with any glasses on, it is a clear, you know, it, there is a plain blue ink on it. But when you look here, you can see the actual ink drops. Um, the chip itself, as I say, is about a half a millimetre square. Now, the stepping on this, I've reduced the step size. If you really zoom into these images here, you can see alternating bands of sharpness and slight softness. So I reckon to be able to do this shot properly, I probably need to stack about 500 images. Um, and remember, I say this is half a millimetre. We're talking not much movement here. But... Um, it works, and so we've got it to that point. Until I can get reliable photographs taken at 10 times and understand what's going, I'm not even going to try the 50 times. Uh, the 50 times stuff, I'm going to see if I can get a chip, a photo of this chip here as most of it, and uh, that may well need 500, 600, who knows, maybe even more photographs. Um, this stuff is fiddly. Um, but anyway, I just thought a, an update showing what I've got. Let's say, there's the lens. I'm using one of the rings that's available for it to attach the lens and camera to the stack shot there. Um, I'm sure this will change over time. This is just a sort of first idea. But the piano hinge at the bottom and being able to check the angle, I suspect that I will be using this in future for some of my commercial work uh, because if it makes it easier and more reliable, then as I say, for commercial work, it's worth doing. But anyway, there we go. There's a couple of shots there, just some examples. That's the progress on it at the moment. I'll do some more quick videos covering different aspects of it. Anyone wants to drop me an email or something like that who's been experimenting with this sort of stuff, has any suggestions, uh, please do let me know uh, if you've got any other questions. And I say, have a look, the software I'm using, it's covered in the uh, review. See the notes to this particular video and that will cover that one. Anyway, um, yeah, I can, these, these two, they are so small, I can, with these glasses on, I can see it as a tiny pinprick and that's it. And there's the detail of it. Looks pretty good. And yeah, medium for There is a little, I would just, just add while I remember it, there is just a little bit on the medium format, there's a little bit of vignetting in the corners, a dark and quite a you know, strong, but correctable. Quality seems to go well right up the corners, but um, once you stack it, uh, as long as you're careful, looks very good. Anyway, thanks very much and uh, see what we can do. Bye.